Welcome back to Glampalooza. Today we've got an enlightening conversation with Seth Frazier, the owner of Comfy Dome Glamping. He'll share his journey in creating eco-friendly off-grid glamping experiences using geodesic domes. He's up in Maine. We'll learn about the challenges he faced, customer care, and the importance of word of mouth marketing in the glamping industry. Stay tuned. Glampalooza, the ultimate guide to all things glamping. Discover the beauty and luxury of outdoor living with expert hosts and enthusiasts. Get ready to unplug, reconnect, and experience the magic of glamping. Join us now on Glampalooza. I've got Seth Fraser here up from Jefferson, Maine. Jefferson, Maine in February, but uh, it's not the Maine you guys would think of. <laughs> Seth, welcome to the Glampalooza show. We're really glad to have you here. Thank you. Tell us a little bit, like introduce yourself and introduce your place, please. Sure, my name's Seth Frazier and uh, I own a uh, glamp site called Comfy Dome Glamping. So we do geodesic uh, clear domes. Uh, we've been doing it now. This is our fifth year. We're going into our sixth year. Uh, been growing steady ever since we started. Super excited. We, we actually, um, we really pride ourselves on being a off-grid a glamp site. So we do our best to uh, give everybody all the comforts they need, but we use things like solar power and, uh, you know, uh, composting toilets and things like that. So you have all the normal conveniences, but, you know, we're trying to minimize our impact on the earth and permanent damage. So that's, uh, it's been something that I'm, I'm very proud of. Um, certainly it's not without challenges, but it's still, uh, it, that stuff is great. And it just allows us to still have all the fun and comfort, you know, anybody else would have or offer. Uh, but, you know, you just kind of know your your impact on the earth is not quite as uh, detrimental. So. so no clear cutting, no, <laughs> no clear cutting, no, uh, no, we don't do any of that. We don't damage the earth when we build our domes. Uh, it's really, in all honesty, if we wanted to move a dome and bring it back to its natural state, in the most cases, we just have to uh, plant grass and, and it will be right back to what it was originally. So we're we're really proud of that fact. You should be. That's an incredible thing. A lot of people entering this space, um, you know, the ones I've talked with ha have that same sort of mentality of let's be really gentle to the earth. We want to, you know, plant trees. We want to, you know, do all the good things for the earth. But I know there's got to be places out there that are like, oh, there's land. Let's go clear it, strip it, use it, you know, and unfortunately. But so we want to shed light on people like you. <laughs> And I'm so excited because you're the first one that I've interviewed who has domes. And uh, yes. I love domes. I'm building a place eventually that has domes. And I'm, I'm now I'm your student. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how long ago did you start Comfy Domes? And, um, you know, tell us, walk us through the uh, quick history of it. Sure. So it's actually a fun little story. Uh, 2018, I... I was actually, I was flying in a plane and um, I was reading one of those, back of one of those magazines, the little airplane magazines, and I read this, like, just a, maybe a couple paragraphs about domes, and I thought, oh, how cool are those? And, you know, I guess followed it in the back of my mind uh, and never thought about it again. And one day I was down in uh, a lower field of, that we own, and there was an overgrown pond. I started cleaning it up, and I thought, oh, you know what would be great is to put a dome down here. but not with the idea of starting a business, but just as a family fun thing, particularly for my daughter. So, you know, like a, a true guy, you know, I never did any feedback and I just started doing everything and I buy this thing and I build it, get it all ready. And I think my daughter's going to love it. Get it all done. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Nope. And, uh, you know, at that point, I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? You know, because I'm in all this money. And I thought, well, this would be so fun. I, I know if, as a kid, I would have loved it. But um, so I let it sit there for a while. And, uh, you know, I knew of Airbnb, hadn't used Airbnb. And I just thought, well, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll throw it on there to see if I can make my money back. And, uh, you know, almost instantly we took like, 30 reservations and I thought, oh, that's interesting. But um, being, I, I have a business background in management and finance. So, you know, I, I didn't let 
my excitement get the best of me. And I thought, well, let, let's test this out. So the next year, you know, I, I opened just for the summer. So it was like from June till October because we didn't have them heated. And didn't have any, you know, outdoor bathrooms that could sustain the cold weather. And, you know, I was booked like, oh gosh, I, I'd have to look, but it was somewhere between 80 and 90 and of the dates that we were open uh and then i thought oh okay now maybe something so then i the next year i i really went big big for me anyways i added two more domes so now i had three domes and uh you know then of course right then and there the pandemic hit and <sighs> um i thought oh god couldn't couldn't be worse timing you know but it actually was great because we were you know we just had three domes so for us when everybody else was getting shut down because they were so big and we didn't have any shutdowns, everybody was isolated. Um, and we, I figured out ways like to uh, have individual toilets at each lamp site. And so everybody was super, you know, by themselves. No one had to worry about coming into contact. And, you know, then we're now just kind of leveling back out again. You know, I think we're getting back to a more normal uh, state, but, you know, and all that, it was just great because the whole time I was like listening to guests and I was so grateful to use Airbnb and eventually my own direct bookings. But people are so nice and they gave me tons of feedback like, hey, we'd love to do this or we'd love to have this next time we come. And everything I could was manageable, I would do. You know, of course, some people wanted like uh, electricity and running water at their <laughs> domes. I'm like, well, you know, yeah, I'd love to do that too. But that, that's a little outside of what we're trying to do here. But, you know, all those little things. And it's funny, you know, when you do that, right? People always say, God, you've thought of everything. And oh. I, I always try to be as humble as possible and be like, no, I wish I could say I thought of it. You know, I just listen. That's what I did. People gave me feedback. They said, this is what we want. And if I could do it, I did it. That's that's fantastic. I mean, that's almost as good as coming up with it on your own. <laughs> like, right, yeah. How yeah. many businesses listen? You know, it's kind of mm. a long start. So. Right. Man, all right. So you got the three domes now. Walk us through what happens. Somebody arrives at your property. What are they going to see? Sure. So when they arrive, they actually pull right up to my main house. So I, I live on the property because I'm, I'm also not only the business owner, but I'm the maintenance guy and the greeter. So I make sure to greet everybody that arrives. I have a welcome basket room, which uh, consists of whoopie pies and we fresh waters, fire starters, lighters, uh, little bug zappers and, and portable lights. So all the small things that most people forget about to bring, um, you know, we, we provide all that stuff. And then also lots of helpful handouts about places to get breakfast, lunch, dinner, hiking trails. Uh, kayaking, all the, the fun things that we love to do and that other people sometimes will turn us on to spots we weren't even aware of locally. Um, so we're always, we provide that stuff when people arrive. And then I actually walk them down to their domes, show them all around so they're clear on like everything. Let them ask me any questions. Although again, part of our, our structure is to be super comfortable and convenient, but we keep things very minimal so you don't get overwhelmed with, you know, gadgets and switches. And so it's pretty straightforward, but there's, you know, there's always questions people ask and, and I, I do my absolute best to answer everybody and be available for them. That's great. And you're open year round, is that right? Oh, yeah, I closed down just in January. Again, in a typical winter in May, January is like our the, the coldest month out of the year, but We've just had a really abnormal winter and yeah. it's been super mild. So. Oh, that's great then. So uh, how do you heat your, your domes? Yep, so we use a, a portable propane heater. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, they're, they're great. I mean, they're, they're really these little bulletproof kind of uh, systems that are non-electric. So they run without any sort of solar power. They do a super good job of heating the domes. Um, and again, they're super simple. They have a, a normal household thermostat attached to them and you just set the temperature and they warm right up and, and do a really good job of keeping people warm. That's fantastic. Now I know Maine can get pretty warm in the summer. Do you have air conditioning also or 
Do we have no, to? No, we don't. Yeah, we're working on that because that's uh, it, it's funny. We've looked at a lot of different options uh, to provide people. We actually looked at solar uh, air conditioners, which I didn't even really know those were there. But um, yeah, it's just these things that are, are not quite um, up to the level of being able to, to use them easily. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are working on that. But what we use is we use these big uh, sunshades that are 90% uh, block out shades. So uh. you draw those and they encase the dome. And, and just by staying in the shade, that does a, a tremendous job of keeping you cool. But you can also open all the vents and the doors and they're all covered with, um, you know, bug screens and there's fans. So it does a really good job. And, and for the most part, I mean, most people during the day, especially in the summer, it's just so brilliant in Maine with all the hiking and swimming. Very few people are homes, but you certainly can if you'd like to. But we're, uh, yeah, most people are out and about. By the time they get home at night, it, it's nice and cool and, and comfortable. Yeah. Folks, if you have not vacationed in Maine, you're really missing out. It's on the license plate, vacation land. I mean, it's That's right. yeah, a yeah. fantastic place to go. Um, how far are you from the coast? Oh, uh, we're less than 20 minutes. So you can oh. get to the coast. Uh, Dan Riscott is our first major coastal town. But yeah, you, there's so many good spots. Camden, Maine, oh, yeah. Rockland, Maine. They're they're just beautiful right on the water. They have great hiking and restaurants. So yeah, you can get to the coast pretty quick from us. That's fantastic. Uh, my husband and I went up to Maine for a vacation a couple of years ago and I was on a quest. I wanted to have every lobster roll <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> I did my best. Yeah. I don't think I did it, but I Oh. Every day, it was amazing. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't had a lobster roll, you are, you know, you haven't lived. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's so many different lobster roll options around here that, yeah, you'll get, uh, you'll be sick of lobster by the time you're done if you hit every single one. Right, definitely. And the blueberry, oh, go during wild blueberry season too, because... Yeah, well, actually, we, we work with a local farm because uh, that's part of our package, too, is everybody receives homemade fresh blueberry muffins on their last day. Oh, my. And uh, we will buy, you know, 40 to 100 pounds of Maine local fresh blueberries, and that's what we make our, our muffins with all year round. So oh they're, they're delicious, and there's a big difference between fresh and the blueberries versus store bought. Oh yeah, and the wild ones versus normal one. They're like these wild ones. They're tiny. They're so good. Oh. That's right. Yeah, so super good. sweet. Yeah, they're great. That's really cool. What do you love most about hosting? What I love most is I actually I love meeting new people. So uh, you know, part of my background I didn't mention that earlier, which is I have zero hospitality, like running any sort of hotel or anything. I had no background whatsoever, but uh, yeah, I love people. I love being of service. I love to just chat with them and go down and, um, you know, just have conversations about whatever, you know, sometimes the business, sometimes what they do. When, and, you know, I, I can talk, so I, I could be down there for two, three hours and <laughs> I've actually made some great friends. People invite me down to have dinner with them down at their domes or sit by the campfire. And and that's my favorite part is meeting all these people. And, and then of course, you know, just to, you know, kind of boost my own ego, right? I love, uh, I love just hearing the feedback that people had a great time and they loved everything about it and that they wanted, they can't wait to come back. And that, you know, that's just like shows you, you know, all right, I guess I'm doing something right. If you're you're sitting there thinking, oh, you know, am I doing the right thing here? When you hear people say stuff like that, it just oh. is like, you yeah, you can't get any better than that. So. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think for a lot of hosts who've left like a corporate type setting, you know, this, it feels kind of like, well, this is fun and in, in a lot of ways easy, but really rewarding. How can this be a job? Right? Yeah, <laughs> it is, exactly. it is mm -hmm. a lot of hard work as well. What was it like for you, you know, developing it? I, I would assume, you know, you've got this pond. That's great. Did you put a deck down? Um, you know, what was the building process like for you? Yeah, it was. So yeah, it, there was lots of challenges. I mean, so for that first year and a half, I mean, I only had one dome and I was really trying to do everything possible to make it the best I could. So when I built the next several domes, you know, I, I would have everything kind of already laid out. So it was a huge trial and error. 
uh, process that went on. Yeah, for almost two years. And I would, um, yeah, I mean, some people, then most people probably laugh because when I would go and buy something, I think, yeah, this is a solution to the problem. I get it all together and I'm like, oh, it's all crap. So I'd rip it all out and throw it away or whatever. Um, but thankfully, you know, like I said, I was only doing that on one dome versus like multiple domes. And, but yeah, that's what I did. So I just, uh, I do a ton of research and I would uh, ask anybody who was willing to like give me information. But at the time I started, um, I think in Maine, I'm trying to think if there was any other domes. Maybe there was like one other dome. I mean, it, you know, I'm sure someone has a private one, but no one was renting them as options to stay. Um, so there wasn't like this whole group of people I could pick from Verse now there are actually multiple different places. Um, so yeah, I'd search, I'd, I'd go online, I would, yeah, ask carpenters, anybody would give me some feedback on how can I make this better, particularly insulating uh, domes and things like that, like how do you insulate them in the winter so it's, uh, they stay warm but it's not too bulky and it can get pretty complicated once you get into the weeds, but that that was fun too, was just to know like, hey, I could go do something that I've never done before, figure it out. And the best part was when I was done, I'd go back down the next day and nothing fell apart. So I'm like, great. <laughs> it you know, worked. <laughs> yeah, it worked. You know? so, yeah, I, I, I like that part too, is just using my mind and trying different things. That's really fun. It's, you know, it's constantly, you know, here's a challenge. How are you going to, you know, overcome that? Okay, here's another one. <laughs> here's another That's one. right. Yeah. That's really smart. You did it with one first before you added, I mean, imagine if you'd started with 10, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, that that's something that, uh, yeah, like any, I, I always now have lots of different entrepreneurs reach out to me who want to do similar things. A lot of them are like way on the other side of the country, but yeah, that's that's something I always tell people is, you know, it, it is always tempting, right, to just like dive in and just go head first and spend all this money and stuff. But at least in my experience, it was like, you know, that one, although I, I was had so much enthusiasm, it was like I was just chomping at the bit to like get going. It was really, you know, helpful to go slow because, yeah, like I said, I, I, there was just so much I had no idea about. And, uh, and also, you know, things seem to all break down at the same time. So, you know, when it was one dome, it was like, okay, well, I only got, but I've had that happen with the heaters. They all, some sort of whatever's going on. And it's never one, it's all of them all at once. And it's like at the coldest day of the year. So, you know, when I learned to troubleshoot one really well, it was a lot easier to manage the rest of the dome. So that. That's like my one piece of advice to all those entrepreneurs out there is it's oh, like, yeah. yeah, one. And then when you get that perfected, go forward. That's really sound advice. What else would you have, uh, you know, advice wise, mostly for dome people, because, uh, you know, they're going to be most, um, most attuned to your property, especially, but what other pieces of advice would you have for us? Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's like the one big piece of advice, but you know, the other pieces are, um, there, there's actually, there's all sorts of different, uh, styles of dome, uh, particularly the material they make the domes out of. Um, so, you know, it depends on the climate you live in, but, uh, you know, for Maine, the domes I use, I've, I've actually had to do a lot of custom work compared to now, you know, there's so many companies uh, that offer some sort of dome. But for me, again, to, to keep it so it was manageable and I wasn't like set, like spending just tons of money. Um, you know, I did a lot of, yeah, that custom, I, I got a very simple structure and then knowing I was going to have to build all sorts of solutions to the problems that um, it didn't already address. Mm. Uh, but it, what it did was it taught me like the whole aspects of the dome verse. Yeah, you can buy kits, but depending on how complicated you get, you can buy, you know, some of these domes can be fifty, hundred thousand dollars if you're not careful. Um, and, you know, I guess not to get again too deep into the details, but if you're into finance, yeah, it takes a long time to recover, you know, your your initial investment just on one dome. So, you know, if you kind of keep it minimal, it also teaches you to where the where you're weak in your just hospitality game, which 
again, this is, and I'm, I'm, that's not a criticism to anybody. This has come from a person who had zero experience. So, you know, diving headlong into this industry, I knew nothing about. I didn't have really any experience dealing with general public and people canceling. And of course, right, COVID came. And so you'd make all these reservations and then like 50 of them would cancel all the same time and you had to learn how to budget your finances because you just wouldn't know when you all of a sudden would be giving back all this money hey. um, you know keeping my overhead costs as low as possible trying to learn as much as i could mm -hmm. allowed me when those really hard times hit i you know i didn't have to take any ppe money i didn't have to do anything like that i've been able to bootstrap i haven't had to borrow any money from the banks and uh, i've been able to grow and you know been able to support myself so but yeah i try to keep it as simple as possible and really you know the way i i differentiate myself is just being as personable and giving the best service i can because i i do think that's probably like the biggest thing out of all of it doesn't matter how fancy the dome is or all the different bells it's all about being good to your customers being caring you know i tend to like um I don't know if someone needs something, a pot or a pan, we rent lots of stuff, but if they need like one, I, sure, take it. Or, you know, if they can't afford something or they got little kids and money's tight, even if money isn't tight, they're just like, oh, the kids love the telescope and we normally rent it. No problem. I'll bring the telescope down. I'll show you guys how to use it. It's a treat for me to use. So it's all those little things. That's what makes it special for people. So that that's like the i think the key to all this is be be good to your customers be kind and you know of course the the fun for you know the the coolness of the domes and stuff is is great too but that's that's secondary to just just being really good to your customers that's that's exactly that's amazing and i think that's a huge lesson to take from this folks it's it doesn't matter how fancy your place is really the thing that's going to set you apart from everybody else out there is how what a great experience your guests have while they're there they're talking it up do they do most of your marketing for you at this point or how else are you promoting yeah they do i mean so i i do a, a combination I, I use social media as a huge platform to get out there but I mean, really, the the best is the the customers. So, I mean, all my guests that come in, they'll have a great time. I have so many people come and say, "Oh, you know, Jan and Jim, they stayed. They recommended it. They loved it." And so that that's where I get my best recommendations and the best guests. Because, you know, the other thing is is uh, there's all sorts of statistics out there, but. You know, it's like 90% of people will buy something or go visit somewhere based on friends and family recommendations. And, um, you know, I always knew that, but I never knew how powerful it was until I I try to uh, encourage people to post and promote about us. And if they do, we, we're always trying to do the win-win situation. So we'll give people like free firewood or free telescopes. I also, I love to bake. So I bake these uh, cast iron breakfast cakes. Ooh. So, you know, all this stuff I'll, I'll, I'll give to people, but I just ask in return that if they actually had a good time, obviously if they didn't, you don't have to promote us, but um, thankfully, you know, like 99% of everybody has a great time, you know, promote us to your friends. And again, you don't have to like beat them over the head with it, but just let them know you're, where you're at, send a picture, tell them how much fun you had and, let them know to give me a call and I'll, I'll help them out, you know, so, uh, but yeah, it's so powerful. Word of mouth is is much more powerful than social media. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Cause everybody, you know, you'll, you'll believe reviews that you see out there from strangers. That's a great mm -hmm. thing. But if your friend is telling you it's great, then, you know, that's kind of a done deal. <laughs> so. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so powerful. Your friends recommend it. It's yeah. And, and, you know, in social media, spend a lot of money out there and lots and lots and lots of people view us but you know their your conversion rates are far from how many people view you if you spend that time and energy that ten dollars or whatever amount of money it is that you give in free product um you know that that's worth it tenfold versus spending ten dollars on facebook to run an ad because you know we, so many people view it but 
so few actually click through to make a reservation. Exactly. And even if they like, you can't take a like to the bank. <laughs> so. That's right. You know, likes don't count for much. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice fluff for the ego. But <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. What's your long term plan there, Seth? Yeah. So my long term plan is uh, we're looking at uh, bigger pieces of property. Mm -hmm. Um, and to do more of a, uh, almost like a sanctuary. So in Maine, one of the things we have an abundant supply of is land. So, uh, you know, there's a couple spots I've seen that are 100, 150 acres, and we'd love to be able to turn those into a much more uh, all-inclusive, um, not as, I don't want to use the term resort, but it would really be like a nature preserve where you can walk the land, walk trails, do all sorts of activities right in that location. Um, and then also experience, you know, just the coolness of sleeping in the dome and being out in nature. I mean, that's the other thing too, right? Is that's what's great about glamping is you get all that fun stuff of camping, but at the end of the night, you're in a weatherproof, waterproof, windproof, uh, you know, campsite or camp, um, and then you get a bed and you get heat and lights and all that. And you so, didn't have to do any of it. <laughs> it's just there. And that's, yeah, right. That's the other part is like, you don't have to make your bed. You don't have to clean it. All you have to do is show up. And that's what I tell everybody. I'm like, I'm at the point where I don't want to sleep on the ground. I don't want to deal with inflatable mattresses. I don't want to do that. I love sleeping in a bed. So that alone is worth its weight in gold is just sleeping on a bed first on the ground. That is for sure. I mean, campers, I, you know, I used to camp as a kid. It was great. No problem. Now I'm like, oh, <laughs> like back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Your bones hurt when, as we get older versus, yeah, kids don't like, yeah, sleep in a pile of dirt. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. That's, that's the beautiful thing with glamping is, uh, you know, get the most right. comfortable bed possible. And it's, you know, you're just out there in nature and you don't have to set it up or schlep it anywhere. So. Right. You just show up and you leave because, we're also avid uh, campground campers and, uh -huh. uh, you know, that that's another, just a challenge, especially if you have kids or you're oh, from yeah. the city and you don't have the ability to, you know, have all the gear you need. Uh, you know, this is what's great about glamping is you can do all those same exact things, just minus you don't have to buy anything, you don't have to store it, because you'd be surprised um, how much work it actually takes to properly store your camping equipment without it getting moldy so if it sits in a closet all year round and you go to grab it you know for the next season if it's wet or has mil you know that it all really shouldn't be used because it can yeah. actually be you know very dangerous to your health and sure. you know most people unless you're really into this stuff they don't know that so that's why i always say like unless you want to spend all that time which god bless you if you do yeah. uh, you know Glamping is your, your next best option. So. That's for sure. Man, that's great. All right. So some parting words for people who are already booking travel for this coming summer, especially in the fall. Oh, my goodness. The fall must be gorgeous there. What would you say to entice them over to your site? <laughs> sure. Oh, absolutely. Well, yeah, the first thing I'll say is uh, we're our location is absolutely amazing because we're really centrally located. Um, and particularly around the ocean. So we have mountains, we have lakes, we have rivers. Uh, and if you're into the recreational fishing, four wheeling, some, all that stuff is available uh, right around us. Uh, and then you can also get the culture. There's several museums and things like that nearby. Lighthouses, if you're into the lighthouses. We actually aren't too far from the uh, famous Forrest Gump lighthouse. Um, ah. So you can you can get down there in like 45 minutes from where we are. Um, but yeah, so just to get that really well-rounded experience in Maine, the mid coast I think is great. You come and stay with us. Uh, again, you'll get that awesome feel of camping, but you don't have to worry about any of the hassle. You get fresh blueberry muffins and coffee in the morning on your last visit. Uh, you'll also get me. So I I tell everybody, you know, I'm always available 24 seven. And when I say that, I mean it. People call me at 2.30 in the morning if they're having a problem and I will get out of bed and I will come help you. Um, but more importantly, we just want you to come up, have fun, enjoy nature, enjoy your time. I'll help you with it. So you don't have to, 
You don't have to worry too much about, do I have the right stuff? Am I missing this? I'll correspond with you all before your trip to help you arrange everything. And the other thing is uh, uh, your listeners can use uh, code FRIEND10 and get 10% off on a booking. Wow, uh, thank you. That will save them a little bit of money there. And uh, yeah, and like I said, I always love to throw in a little treat or two when you're up here. So. Well, sign us up. That sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go glamping, guys. <laughs> Come on glamping. We'd love to have you. All right, Seth, and how, where, where can people find you? Yep, so we're on social media. Uh, so Instagram, we're Comfy Dome Glamping. Uh, Facebook, we're also Comfy Dome Glamping. And then you can find us at www.comfydomeglamping.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Seth. We are glad you were here. Everybody yes. get down up to Maine. <laughs> Come on up. We'd love to have you all and we'll get your lobster roll. And that's a wrap for this episode of Glampalooza. We hope you enjoyed your journey into the world of glamping and learned something new. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things glamping. And if you love this episode, please share it with your friends and family. Until next time, get outside and play. <laughs>